With four games to go, there are four teams that could win the Premier League title. We need to do our bit by beating Fulham, Forest, Spurs and Palace. But even then, all four wins might not be enough. Last time out, we thought Kim Min Jae's goal in the 87th minute against Man City was going to win it for us. However, we then conceded moments later in the 89th minute as Erling Haaland was put through and scored a fantastic low goal past Diogo Costa. We're going to stick with this formation that we've adopted in the previous couple of episodes because it seems to be working pretty well against the big clubs. We're playing against Fulham today who have had a decent season. They're currently fighting for a European place in seventh. First highlight of the game is going towards Fulham though and they are going to want to score early on especially being away from home towards us as the ball comes across the six yard area and they have managed to sneak it in at the far post. Not a great start to the game for us at all, but Bruno Fernandes' corner is sent towards the far post. It's collected by Leno, the keeper, and now he's got to show his distribution, or hopefully lack of it, as he sends it long straight to Kim at the back. Right, now we can look to try and build forwards and get ourselves the equaliser early in this game. Casemiro gives it to Juan Foyt on a yellow card already. He needs to be careful. But Bruno Fernandes finds Kimmich on the edge of the area, who finds Sancho a little further back, goes to shore edge of the area, and really that might have been the worst choice there. There were bodies in front of him in the middle. If he'd found one of them, they might have scored. Now this is even more frustrating for us because as we are currently losing, Chelsea are drawing and so are Man City, and Arsenal have drawn. They were the lunchtime kickoff just above my head. You can see they've drawn 1-1 with West Ham, so they've dropped points. But as we approach half-time, we are not looking like we're going to pick up any points right now. Foyth finds Sancho, finds Ramos, who drives into the area Area. Sancho then takes it out the area again and finds a cross to Rashford far post puts it across to Bruno and finally Rashford isn't selfish gives it to Bruno for us to equalize just before half time it's going to VAR though was Rashford offside he wasn't thankfully how close was it in particular because right here ooh, I'll tell you what I want to see the lines on this because I'm not sure he was onside oh they've just not shown them to us Okay. Okay, dressing room at half time. Uh, I'm going to pump the fist and say we can. St what do I say? We've been the better team here. Keep going. It's not really done an awful lot to the team, but we have dominated the match stats in this game. 15 shots, a 1.92 XG to Fulham's three shots and two on target. We have to get something out of this, and I don't think we're going to do it with Gonzalo Ramos on the pitch right now. Martial on you come instead. Kimmich not playing great either, so let's bring Coop Miners on in his place. And Coop Miners are left-footed, actually, so let's swap these two around. Uh, the Mazala on attack, and we'll have the ball-winning midfielder on support. Really frustratingly, it looks like the other teams around us are still drawing as well, as we whew, almost go behind. With 20 minutes to go here, though, we need to find a winner to keep ourselves in that title hunt. If we don't win this game, it becomes so much harder for us, and it's just not going to be in our hands. We have to then rely on other teams losing, which isn't very likely. Martial then on the ball brings it forward. Not many bodies in front of him, so goes out wide to Sancho instead, who gets down the byline, puts a cross into the middle. Rashford heads it goalwards just over the bar. I don't really know how to make this more attacking right now. I don't think I can, unless we move Rashford up front as well as Martial, make him an advance forward as well. And then maybe what we do is move Shaw there, bring Elanga on, who likes to be a, a winger on attack. And then we just move Foyth into the middle there and we have a back three. Shout, uh, demand more at this stage to the players. There's a few happy faces uh, down there at the bottom. But as the clock ticks down, there's five minutes to go as Kim collects the ball into Casemiro. Forward now to Rashford, who's playing as a striker, gives it to Sancho out wide. We've got four, five bodies in the middle and Rashford... Puts it in the back of the net. You love to see it. That's exactly what we needed. A little confused as to how it actually got back to Rashford. I, I thought he wasn't even there, to be fair. So I must have just seen him and Martial just cross over in the penalty area. In fact, it goes... Yeah, it, I thought it came with Martial. But it seemed to go through him and holding and hit, hit Rashford. And he scored. So now we just need to hold on for these final few moments of the game. To collect the three points. Oh, not like this. Not in the 93rd minute, surely. 
Fulham have offered nothing all game and they give the ball away to us. Another goal here wouldn't hurt us at all. It would help us slightly with the goal difference, but I think Man City's goal difference is way better than ours, so it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things right at the end of the season as Alanga puts it into Coop Miners, whose shot is saved down at the feet of Leno. There will be a corner coming from this, but this should be the final bit of action we're going to see on a highlight in today's game. Fingers crossed and we'll just come away with those three points. Coop Miners far post, Casemiro rises. It's Leno who collects it though. Finish the highlight, please. F finish. No, don't, don't come. No, 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 no. Ooh, this isn't. Do not continue Martinez. Good header. Coop Miners can't win it in the air there, but Casemiro picks the midfield. Rashford finds Martial. Martial off the crossbar. Now you can finish the highlight, please. Surely this corner is going to be the last bit of action in the game. Bruno, just take your time. Don't even bother kicking it for another 10 seconds. Take the yellow card if you need to, please. As the clock is now on 95 minutes, Leno collects, and that's that. We've won. So Man City found a way to beat Spurs in the 78th minute. They go on top of the table, overtaking Arsenal, who drew. Chelsea beat Sheffield United 2-0. Uh, they stay on level points. So we've got a better goal difference. Okay, we're still three points off the top. A week off now until the Nottingham Forest game as well. Praise Rashford for his game there. Really good work. Hopefully he just keeps it up these final few games. It also means he has completed his target um, of reaching a seven rating. I'm not quite sure why it ends now as opposed to like, at the end of the season. That would make more sense to me. But he's got a 7.3 average rating across the 12 games that he played since we had a chat with him, which is good. Discuss Rashford's successful completion of target. Well done on completing your target. Uh, you did a great job. Thanks. That was nice. Ah, apparently our under-18s lost the UEFA Youth League final 6-1 to Arsenal. That's that's rough. Fair play to them for getting there, though. They beat Maccabi Tel Aviv, PSG, Sevilla, and Arsenal then were the ones that managed to beat them. It's a shame we will never see them develop in this save file because uh, this is the last episode. There will be a new long-term series starting over on the second channel. There's a link to the second channel in the description to go and subscribe over there. And there's also a vote on the community page of this channel as to who we're going to manage in that first save. Essentially, they're all kind of a building a nation save apart from St. Etienne. That's a bit more of reviving St. And Etienne and getting them back to the top. Uh, the other three saves are Levski Safir from Bulgaria, Kriver from Romania, and Willem. The, I never have to save his team. Willem the second or Willem two? I don't know. But they're from the Netherlands in the second division. Those three saves are more building a nation save and a little bit longer term than St. Etienne. Wow, 500 votes in 30 minutes. That's a lot. And currently St. Etienne are winning by quite a considerable amount. Heading into the Nottingham Forest game, Casemiro's got a slight knock. So I think what we'll do is swap him with Kimmich and then bring him off for Coop Miners. And again, we'll swap them over for Coop Miners' left foot. Forest away is going to be a tough game for us though. They're a decent team. They are fighting against relegation right now as well. So they've got a lot to play for. However, Luke Shaw's corner is sent to the far post. Kim rises highest and he gets his fourth of the season just nine minutes in. Didn't actually check to see who else is playing right now. But it's behind my head. But Man City are playing Sheffield United 0-0. And Chelsea are playing Wolves. Arsenal kick off later on this evening. It means that we temporarily go into to second place in the table and Sheffield United have just scored a goal against Man City that will keep us in second place but level on points with Man City they just have a better goal difference than us fingers crossed Sheffield United can keep that win of course Arsenal could also win and go back ahead of us in the table if they beat Palace later on this evening but it's getting closer and closer that's unfortunate timing as well. You know, that was literally the last kick of the first half there and they've put that in the back of a net from a near post corner. Uh, dressing room, thrash the arms. Far from pleased with what I've just seen from his team and Ramos looks disheartened. He needs to step his game up at the moment. He's been rubbish in recent weeks. But the second half is flying by and once again, we've created a lot of chances for ourselves, but we just didn't need that. Okay, now this is a panic, especially because Man City have now brought it back and are beating Sheffield United. Okay, maybe we do the same as we did last time then. Uh, we go for a two-striker system. Martial will lead the line uh, and then we'll bring a Langer on the wing. Foyth just drops into the middle there of a back three. Bruno on a 6-5, not playing well. Batarina, on you come. I think that's the change we might need to make there. I'm going to shout demand more again which hasn't had the same effect on the players as it had earlier. But we do have a highlight with Sancho bringing the ball into the area. Alanga far post can't win it in the air, but he does collect the loose ball. Puts another cross into the area. Kimmich 
loses the header only as far as Martinez though. And Martinez, under a bit of pressure, has to go back to Juan Foyth, the centre of the three centre-backs right now. He finds Kim and Kim just goes back to Foy. Come on, surely we've got to find a pass forwards here. Alanga on the ball out wide, loses it. And James can come forward here for Forrest. Finds the ball forward. Luckily, Foyth, right position, right time to make that interception. And we can build again. Elanga, Coop Miners. Coop Miners to Rashford. Rashford brought down. Oh, it's probably a red card, isn't it, that? Which is good for us. But I'd rather see us score a goal. Right. Get him off the pitch. They're making changes to try and hold on to their win right now. We have to do something. We just don't have the extra major attacking threat on the bench. Batarina, go on a, a, attack. Kimmich, let's even make you a box-to-box -box midfielder on support now. And as those changes are about to be made, we have a chance to come forward. Batarina swings it over to Alanga, cuts inside, shoots. Oh, it's saved. Ugh. 15 minutes to go. Kimmich with a corner, sends it towards the far post. This time it's headed clear by Forrest. It's a bit of a shame we've not been able to score from open play. We got the, the goal from the corner, obviously, earlier. But we've not looked like scoring from open play until Alanga does that. Thank you. Right, uh, shout, encourage. Just really just try and G these players up right now. I need them to do something. And with three minutes on the clock, nothing's happening. We've got nine minutes of added time. Where on earth has that come from? I don't know. I don't care. But we are wasting all of it right now. We've got to score a goal at the end here. We've had 12 shots. Thrash the arms, we should have won that game. We really should have. Especially as Man City have won their game. Chelsea drew their game. And now Arsenal have gone on to beat Crystal Palace 1-0. So we're three points behind Arsenal, five points behind Man City. We've got Spurs up next in a week's time. We need an absolute miracle. I'm being told through a team meeting. Which... I'll do, right? I'll, I'll do it. We're intent to winning the title. Winning our next match would be a huge step. Make sure victorious. And there's a few players who look angry. Why are you angry, Martial? What could you possibly be angry about here? Sancho says this isn't the right time to put even more pressure on us. I mean, we know this guy just can't handle any pressure, apparently, in real life. Now, that's a bit harsh, actually. I've snapped at him there because he's, he's let me down here in Football Manager. I think, I think you're doing a great job in real life. I, I should say that I respect everyone's views, but I don't. I don't. I'll just be positive and say that's what I want to hear because a lot of people there are pretty happy. Oh, now Sancho wasn't happy and, and now he's gone and sprained his knee ligaments. For, well, he's out for the season. Martinez can play. He's only out for one to three days. So we play at the same time as Man City as they play West Ham and Arsenal take on Wolves. Chelsea Luton is later on in the evening. Sancho is coming off then for Garnacho, who is back fit again. So that works out quite nicely. And then we'll bring Dallow onto the bench for the injured Kobe Mainu. Probably the team as it is again. Like we create so many chances at the moment, but we just... We just can't score enough of them. And as I say that, of course, 20 minutes into this game, all we've had is two shots and not a single highlight. Hopefully more of those will come as the game progresses. And here is that first highlight. Ezekiel Barco coming quite deep there for Tottenham. I guess he's maybe playing a more of a fullback role for them. But he does lose possession. Gonzalo Ramos is through, but he can't put his shot on target. We do win possession on halfway. Okay, that's good. I thought we were about to skip past our defenders there and put me completely through. We give the ball to Rashford instead, who cuts into the area, shoots, doesn't trust Gonzalo Ramos. And at the moment, neither do I. Rashford scores the goal, gives us the lead. Wolves are also beating Arsenal right now, which is good for us. But Man City are winning. And actually, if they win today, they do win the title. So we need West Ham to have a monumental second half. All we can do is win. And right now, we are doing that. And we always doubled our lead there with Rashford coming quite close there as he's finally found a bit of good form towards the end of this season. Obviously, we saw him reach his target. So, you know, that was quite good for his motivation. But to be fair, you know, it doesn't really matter if we win, if Man City also win. Because that would just stop us from having a chance of winning the title and it's a 
a couple of silly results that we've had across the season that have contributed. Have we just been a little bit better in certain moments? Of course, we could have won the title. It's all if, buts and, and maybes, I suppose. I think we actually need West Ham to win as well to stop Man City getting any points because if we win, they draw, there'll be four points ahead of us. Is that what I'm right? I think, yeah, we four points there. I can't remember if I'm honest with you. Arsenal have also just equalised in the bottom left of the screen as well. Luke Shaw's corner to the far post has uh, been cleared, but only as far as Garnacho, who I thought was going to shoot, decides to shoot instead, to be fair, but from a really stupid angle. I'm not quite sure why he didn't cross it. We lose possession and win it just outside the attacking third. If we can get another goal here right now, it doesn't really matter, does it, to be fair, because Man City are winning. And, and this is the most heartbreaking way to lose a title, I suppose, when you there's nothing you can do. As we do score a second goal, great. We'll get three points here, but what could have been? Please, West Ham, just, just do something for us, please. I mean, how do Forrest score two goals past us and yet Tottenham concede three to us and can't get a single goal past us? Oh, disallowed, apparently. Who was offside? Oh, uh, Gonzalo Ramos by quite a long way. Despite Spurs having a chance with 10 seconds to go on the clock, they can score it if they want because it doesn't change anything. We are going to win this game, but we are going to lose the title, which is just sad, in it, really? It's pretty sad. Barco, go on, take your shots. Saved by Costa. That's full time. We win the game, but Man City, to my knowledge right now, we'll get confirmation in a second. Yes, Scored two goals in the 90th minute to win the title. Chelsea also beat Luton later on as well. So we are in a battle for second, third or fourth place. We, we're, we are still playing for that. Crystal Palace away is not going to be an easy game for us. But given how well they played in that previous game, I think we just leave the starting line at the exact same. So Arsenal are playing away to Tottenham. Chelsea playing away to Bournemouth. To be fair, all three of us should win. First highlight of the game, though, is going towards Crystal Palace and we lose possession as we try to defend and Mason Burstow, Mason Burstow, why did I say Mason Burstow? Musa Barrow, where did Mason Burstow come from? Barrow scores a very good goal and that drops us down to fourth in the table as both Arsenal and Chelsea are winning their games early doors. Palace with another set piece as they find Elise edge of the area and Elise... <sighs> We should have just finished the episode before this game even started. Because suddenly fourth place looks a lot worse than... It looks like we're nowhere in this title fight at this stage. We were right in it until the penultimate game of the season. And it looks like now we were nowhere near it as Michael Elise brings the ball forward for Palace right now. Managing to just dance through our defence, but Luke Shaw does get back to uh, cover his man and then make the tackle. Martinez finds Kimmich, who's in wide open space in the centre of the park. Koopman is a little bit further forward in more space, and Fernandez once again further forward in even more space, but his ball over the top is rubbish, and Walker Peters collects it. His ball was looking a bit dodgy there, but it was collected by a Crystal Palace player, and Eze can now bring the ball forward. Out wide to Barrow Foyth. Good interception, though. He can now give it into... Bruno Fernandes is having a really poor game right now. At this stage, I might sub him off as Eduard, I think, was offside but didn't score anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Palace have had two shots in today's game and scored both of them. That is very frustrating when it happens against you. And at half-time, we are 2-0 down. Uh, Thrash the arms, sort it out. Right, we've got a chance to attack early in this second half. Luke Shaw finds Rashford and he can find a ball into Coop Miners who drives into the area across to Garnacho, takes a deflection which helps it on its way into the back of the net. Looking to build out from the back then, Kim on the ball, plays it across to Martinez, who plays it down the flank to Shaw. Rashford now finds the ball through to Gonzalo Ramos, and that's what I wanted to see. Now we just need to get a third goal, put us back into third place in the table, and look like we actually were in a title fight this season. Uh, Rashford into Gonzalo Ramos, back to Rashford. His shot goes in the back of the net. Everything we touch is turning to gold in the second half. Not long to go. 10 minutes left in this game. Elise has been put forward. His shot is oh, just saved by Diogo Costa. In fact, no, it wasn't. Hit the post, I think, and then went behind. Clock is ticking down. By looks of things, we are going to get the win and come third place this season in the Premier League. Man City ended up beating Newcastle 1-0. Chelsea won and so did Arsenal. So nothing changed in the top four in that final result. Thing is, we really could have won the title. You know, if we just beaten Forrest when they went down to 10 men and we got a third goal that would have given us two extra points 
and the Man City game as well, of course. If we just hadn't let Harden score in the last second, we would have won that game, got two extra points, Man City have two points less, and that would have put us on 86 points and Man City on 85. It's fine margins across the whole season. There's lots of different things you can point to. But you know what? I think we've had a pretty successful start to life in FM24. Next week, when the editor comes out, we will be back to the normal content on the channel, which I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth sunk into. We've got a long list of ideas for this year. But if you've enjoyed watching this Let's Play and a little throwback to what we used to do on the channel, of course, we're doing plenty more of this stuff on the second channel from now on. So we'd love it if you could subscribe to the second channel to get ready for when the Let's Play starts over there.